Windsor Castle is the oldest and largest inhabited castle in the world and has been the family home of the British kings and queens for almost a thousand years. There was a royal residence in Windsor all the way back since Saxon monarchs were in power, but the specific site that we know of today was first established by William the Conqueror. Now, this was a time when castles were constructed for military purposes, and the site was chosen for its place above the River Thames and on the edge of a hunting ground. It was constructed to guard the western approach to London. William built a defensive castle called the Moat and Bailey Castle, basically a mound and a stockade around it. Building began in 1070 and ended in 1086, but with its proximity to the capital and the royal hunting grounds, it became the perfect location for a royal residence. In 1110, Henry I took up domestic quarters in the castle and became the first monarch to live there. It was converted to a more residential palace in the late 12th century by his grandson, Henry II. And at this point, the palace contained an official state residence and then a more private residence for the family. It was also at this point that the castle was reconstructed from its original timber and replaced with stone. Henry III continued to rebuild at the turn of the 13th century, improving on the private residence and adding a chapel. Henry III also made the walls 7.3 metres or 24 feet thick in places to better withstand the powerful catapults being used in siege warfare at the time period. Luckily enough, because the castle was actually besieged during the 13th century, twice, both times unsuccessfully. In 1216, the castle was besieged during the First Baron's War by forces loyal to Prince Louis of France, who rebel barons wanted to replace King John with. This unsuccessful siege lasted two months, and Windsor remained one of just two castles in the southeast that remained in King John's power. In 1357, Edward III invested £50,000 into Windsor Castle, which is said to be the equivalent of around £50 million today. This was a huge remodelling project, with the round tower being rebuilt, the large double-towered gatehouse was added, which is now called the Norman Gateway, and he set in place the layout of the quadrangle area as it is still seen today. Unfortunately, it was not completed until after his death, but it is because of him that Windsor became the royal residence that it is today. The castle was then added to and modified many times over the subsequent centuries, but it still maintains its original plan of a courtyard on either side of a central circular tower. Other than a few tweaks and some improvements to the monarch's chambers and the creation of a gallery by Edward IV, the late 14th century apartments survived unchanged until the 17th century. Now, it did survive, but by the time Elizabeth I came to live in Windsor, the castle was in major need of repair. So a few necessary improvements were made in the 1570s. During the English Civil War, the castle as a representation of monarchy became the target for some parliamentarians. They looted St George's Chapel and the royal apartments. The upper ward was used as a prison for royalists and the great park surrounding began to be sold off in parcels. Charles II, after reclaiming his throne, reinstated Windsor as his principal palace outside of London. He modernised the royal apartments and by 1684 it was the grandest Baroque state apartment in England. In his classic taste, New interiors, expensive textiles and tapestries were included. By the end of the 18th century, little had changed since these improvements. The early Hanoverian monarchs followed William III in favouring Hampton Court and Kensington, and it was not until the reign of George III that Windsor became once again an important centre of court life. George III made some interior improvements with neoclassical design and added a music room and a new dining room. And in 1796, the exterior of the castle also had a facelift. George IV took the throne in 1820 and he wanted to continue the exterior improvements and create a more imposing castle. 
He heightened the round tower, added some masonry and added towers and battlements, despite the fact that the castle was residential. He also added the Waterloo Chamber, celebrating the defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte in 1815, and with the latest styles changing dramatically in this time, he also updated all of the furnishings to a French Empire style. Regency is known for its grandeur and George the Force improvements to the castle had cost nearly £300,000. Sadly, he was only able to enjoy his new castle for 18 months as he died in June of 1830, aged 67. After these extensive updates, little has been done since to the palace. A few additions of a private chapel and a reconstruction of the Grand Staircase were done during Queen Victoria's reign, but little else has been done to the palace since. Queen Victoria actually spent most of her time at Windsor Palace after her husband Albert died, and she entered her permanent period of mourning. She became known as the Widow of Windsor. During World War I, as England found itself at war with Germany, the royal family attempted to downplay their German heritage. The House of saxe coburg gotha decided to change their name in 1917. They demonstrated their love of this castle by taking up the name Windsor. On the 11th of December of 1936, King Edward VIII of England famously made his abdication speech from the castle. The ex-king and his new partner Wallace Simpson were made the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, a title made for them, and both would be buried in the royal tombs of the castle. Windsor Castle became the secret residence of the royal family during World War II, and they were officially supposed to be living at Buckingham Palace, and that is where the public believed them to be. The king and queen made public appearances at Buckingham Palace, but joined their children at Windsor where their family were staying during the London bombardments. All of the windows of the castle were blackened out and each of the royal bedrooms were reinforced in case of a bomb hit. The castle survived the war unscathed. Elizabeth II herself grew up in the castle and continues to spend the majority of the year in residence there. On November 20th of 1992, a fire broke out in the Queen Victoria's private chapel. The fire quickly spread engulfing the chapel and going on to destroy the ceilings of St George's Hall and the Grand Reception Room. It lasted for 15 hours until it was able to be stopped. Repair and restoration began immediately. Areas most damaged were redesigned, but where they were able to, they did restore what was damaged, in keeping with the original designs and construction. More than 100 rooms, including St George's Hall, were destroyed or damaged, almost 20% of the castle area. This was completed in five years in 1997. The cost, £37 million, was largely met from the proceeds of admissions to the castle precincts and to Buckingham Palace. Windsor Castle remains Queen Elizabeth's official residence to this day, and is used regularly for ceremonial and state occasions, including state visits. It houses the treasures of the Royal Collection, the Royal Archives, the Royal Photograph Collection, the Print Room and the Royal Library. Windsor Castle is also home to St George's Chapel, the home to the Order of the Garter, the oldest order of chivalry founded by Edward III in 1348. It ranks just after Westminster Abbey as a royal mausoleum and contains the bodies of Henry VI, Edward IV, Charles I, Edward VII and George V, and Henry VIII alongside his third and favourite wife, Jane Seymour. And here are a few random facts. You may recognise this chapel from when it hosted the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And on the land is Frogmore, which is also the site of the mausoleum of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The Great Kitchen at Windsor is the oldest working kitchen in the country, and it has served 32 monarchs. The oldest glazed window in the castle dates back to approximately 1236, and it is thought to have been a wedding gift from King Henry III to his wife Eleanor of Provence. In the 12th century, some of the apartments within the castle were open to the public for the first time, and the very first guidebook was published in 1749. 
There were more than 1 million visitors to the castle between 2010 and 2011. Windsor Castle has stood and survived for almost a thousand years. Since 1070, it has seen history and has gone through numerous rebuilds, renovations and restorations. 40 monarchs, including Her Majesty the Queen, have called the castle home. And if you haven't yet had the chance to visit the castle, hopefully I've convinced you to add it to the bucket list. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.